A top federal safety regulator is shifting gears today. For the first time, it is calling for seat belts in all school buses. Chris Van Cleve is following this. 16-year-old Ashley Brown's life ended on her way to a high school soccer game when the bus she was riding in crashed. Her father, Brad, believes a seatbelt would have saved her. Not a day goes by we don't think of her. Wounds are refreshing every time we see an accident happen that um, takes the life of another school child. That could have been prevented uh, with uh, lap shoulder belts on school buses and on every motor coach. Last month, this school bus flipped over in Virginia, injuring 28. It did not have seat belts. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration estimates four children die every year in large school bus crashes. The agency believes seat belts would cut that in half. We all are used to putting on a seat belt and you get on the school bus and they're not there. And it's this big void in our safety system. You know Administrator what? Mark Rosekind is hoping that, change right? can come they without new regulations, but currently just six states require seat belts on school buses, and they are expensive, costing between seven and $10,000 a bus. With nearly a half million school buses in the U.S., the cost to retrofit them all could go into the billions. Seat belts save lives, should be on every school bus for every kid. Let's start figuring out how to make that happen, not what the barriers are, but how to get those seatbelts on every school bus. Brown welcomes the renewed push for seatbelts, but says it doesn't go far enough. Saying it as, as policy uh, is, uh, is a good step. I think that what is needed is the um, in regulation, in law. Estimates range from 2,000 up to as many as 8,000 students a year being hurt in school bus crashes. So, in a way, this is a bit of peer pressure on school districts and bus makers to install seatbelts. And for good reason, Scott Nitza says if it has to go through the regulation making process, that could take up to a decade. Our transportation correspondent, Chris Van Cleve. Thanks, Chris.